Hey guys, Lynn with the National Cat Groomers here. I'm just going to give everybody a few minutes to pop on. Make sure that everybody, if you can hear me, go ahead and add where you are joining me from right in the comments while I go ahead and add this to the events. And we'll get started in just a couple minutes. I'm trying to do right at the top of the hour. Ooh. Hopefully it is posting okay. So again, if you guys can hear me, make sure that you post in the comments. Hi guys, hi, hi, hi. Pretty sure we're live. I'm just trying to make sure I can see all the chat things. Which is a little tricky. You guys having a good, it's, I think it's, what is it, Tuesday? I can't believe it's only Tuesday. It feels like it's like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> ah. Just making sure that we so remember, if you guys can hear me, make sure you say hi and that you tell me where you're joining me from. And I'm going to start in just a sec. I just want to share to a couple quick places so everybody can grab a seat. Okay. All right, perfect. So I'm pretty sure you guys can hear me. And we're going to pop over so you can see me. Hello. Lynn with National Cat Groomers here. I'll just get my notes for today all situated. So if you guys have any comments, make sure that you are putting them into the little comments, any questions, and I will try to get to them um, by the end of tonight's video. If you haven't had a chance to watch the other two videos, then make sure that after this, you go and you watch those two videos. We had the do's and don'ts on products for grooming cats, and especially last night's what to do with a crazy cat. Um, was a good one. So make sure you go and check those out. So tonight is the third and final video in our cat grooming video training series. How good are you at cat grooming and how can you get better? So tonight I want to take up another notch for groomers who are already working with cats. How comfortable are you currently with your cat grooming skills, how you can get better and why you should get better. So I actually want to start with a bit of a quiz. And you can go ahead and put your responses right in the comment section. Let me just move some things out of the way so I can see the comments. Whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. Making sure I can see everybody. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys, okay. I'm just gonna do it up real quick, sorry. Sorry, there's a lot of stuff I have to do by myself. Usually this is why Danielle does the, the videos and then I do all of the behind the scenes. This is just a lot to juggle. So anyway, so I wanna start with a little bit of a quiz. You can go ahead and put your comments right in the comment box uh, in the little comment section. So on a scale from one to 10, one being not confident at all, 10 being I'm amazing, super, super man, like Superman, Scale of one to 10, how confident are you grooming new cats? New cats, new cats that you've never groomed before. How confident on average are you grooming new cats on a scale of one to 10? Number two, what is the percentage of cats in your salon that you consider to be crazy? Number three, true or false, cats are unpredictable. Number Four, how often are you bathing cats? 
always, never, most of them. If they're aggressive, I don't. Okay, so the first one is on a scale of one to 10, how confident are you with new cats? What is the percentage of cats in your salon that you consider to be crazy? True or false, cats are unpredictable. How often are you bathing cats? Almost never, most, if they're aggressive, I don't. So I see some people are putting some stuff in here. Four, five, no, Patty Lee, great, you go girl, nine, six, eight, I love it. Tracy says, true, I'm assuming cats are unpredictable. 3% of your cats, Patty, I might just have you sit this one out, girl. <laughs> love it, love it. Okay, lots and lots of comments. Good. I see some of you are putting always, some of you are saying some as far as bathing cats. Ah, oh, Nicole. Can't believe you just said rare. Okay, so finally, do you know what National Cat Groomers is looking for in terms of their shaving lines for a lion cut or for a belly shave? Like if I asked you to describe to me a lion cut that is for National Cat Groomers certification, would you know what to describe to me? Like where the stopping points are? Just gonna think about it a little bit. But so I, wanted, I want you to think about how did you do on my little quiz? If your confidence level is lower with new cats, then there is a piece of the equation missing. Was there information that you could have gotten during the initial phone call? Are you unsure of how they are going to respond to each part of the grooming process? If you believe a good percentage of your cats to be crazy, or you consider cats to be unpredictable, then you must make sure to watch out the video from last night, what to do with a crazy cat, because I guarantee there are adjustments that you can be that you can be making. Cats are not unpredictable, but we have to go back and we have to look at temperament. So you need to watch yesterday's video, what to do with a crazy cat, because I talk about this in that video. And while I'm talking about it, I'm going to go ahead and pop in that video so that you can go watch it later. Okay. Not right now. You're gonna watch it later. So it sounds like you have some gaps to fill in when it comes to learning about feline temperaments, body language, and how to handle them. So I touched on it briefly in last night's video, but it is really imperative to remove that unpredictability out of working with new cats. So if you are having trouble with completing full grooms, so that means bath and blow dry on many of your cats, then there are definitely improvements that can be made in that aspect. A lot of cat grooming is observing the cat to find out what makes them better or worse, then focusing on the things that make them better and avoiding the things that make them worse. It's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. But if you are struggling specifically in the bathtub, then it's that combination of understanding temperaments and choosing which handling skills are best for the cat, which will make all the difference. Because to be honest, every cat gets a bath in my salon, every cat, every time. And my aggressive cats, it is especially important to get them on good bath schedules so that you can solve the owner's problems, which is usually shedding, preventing matting, dandruff, things like that. We'll also be able to work more safely with the cats and you'll be able to build a positive grooming relationship. But the good news is that there are a lot of things that can be changed to help you have successful grooms at a much higher rate. First, how the grooms are scheduled. You need to limit the stress for each cat by paying attention to when you are scheduling them. If you do both dogs and cats, try scheduling your cats together instead of when dogs are also scheduled. Even if it is just one afternoon a month or one day a month, then build up as you get more client, cat clients. I will always schedule new cats on quieter days because I wanna limit as many outside factors as possible. This is also true when I schedule other cats on days that I might have one of those very vocal screaming cats. You know the ones I'm talking about. Nothing's even happening to them and they're just like Row! at the top of their lungs. I won't schedule new or very shy cats at the same time as those cats so they don't rile up the other cats that are around them. 
I always try to make sure new cats can be done straight through if I can help it. This way I don't lose or waste any time by trying to juggle more than one cat at a time. Once I understand my cats coming in, then I can get them all into a grooming routine that works for them and for my time management. If you are mobile or house call, then you're already ahead of the game in this area, but you'll need to be more solid on your drying and handling skills since you won't have a cage dryer, fan, or additional break time to factor in. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm reading my comments too. <laughs> Dawn says, sometimes I think I'm too confident, then I'm brought back down to reality. Girl, isn't that the truth? We have to remember that cats, they're not unpredictable, but we have to be constantly observing what's going on. At National Cat Groomers, we kind of say, never trust a cat. And what that means is it's, it's not that they're unpredictable, it is that we have to be paying attention to what they're trying to communicate to us. And the other Dawn, Dawn Marie, her problem is with the drying. Most are so scared of it and jump away or pee on their nice clean self. That is definitely a problem that I see. I, that sounds like a lot of people are having problems with drying. I would love to help you with drying. So a couple quick tips before I continue on what I was gonna talk about with drying is I love happy hoodies. We kind of talked about them a little bit last night. I think my video cut out. And one of the things that I do is that my Caddy Shack Vac, which is what I use to help me dry the cats without giving them several escape routes. So I don't have to like hold them down. Cause you know, as soon as you turn the dryer on, the first thing the cat wants to do is right off the table. So I like to limit my escape routes. And one of the ways I do this is by using a Caddy Shack Vac. So I always have towels underneath them and I'll have big fluffy towels. I use a lot of towels in my salon. So I will wrap the cat up snugly in a towel and sometimes put a happy hoodie on. Sometimes if it's the cat is already showing signs of aggression, I might put the air muzzle back on. But then I'll go over to my dryer, go over my caddy shack, I'll turn them on and then I'll walk away from them while holding the cat. So I kind of hold them like a little baby. That way they can start to hear the sounds of the dryer while being across the room. And I kind of just walk around with them. And, and, you know, if so, if I feel them start to kind of move around, I have them pretty snug in this towel and I can kind of calm them down and, you know, make sure I've, I don't have them like running around crazy, you know, going blah. So this kind of helps to introduce them much more slowly to the, to the dryer. Then I will walk over and a lot of new cats, especially shy cats, I will start drying them in my lap and I kind of just start undoing the towel from the bottom. So I still have a good, good hold on them in the, in the, in the top half wrapped in the towel. And I start kind of at the back end. And so if they are going to pee, it's usually at this time. So I haven't gotten too far into the drying process, but I kind of start on the back thigh. So I kind of have them laying on their side. I start on the back thigh and I just start working my way up, working my way around. I'll go ahead and I'll do the back legs, the crooks of those back legs, start to work up the belly. Because girls, you know, girls and guys, I don't want to be, you know, we all know that a lot of groomers and a lot of people who are joining me are probably women, but we do have lots of male CFMGs. So I don't want to just say girl all the time, but when you're drying cats, I mean, the hard part is going to be drying the underside, right? So if you have them in your lap, start drying them in the underside, because once they're used to the drying sound, they're just going to lay there. So at that point, it's really easy to get the back and the sides and the tail and things like that. So why not just, you know, start with the, start with the hard parts. So I actually think Nick, now that I'm saying this out loud, I'm pretty sure I included this later on in my little talk. So I'm going to keep going and we can always talk about trying another time. So the first one we talked about is changing up how you schedule your appointments. The next thing is you need to have a better, better understanding of their personality and their coat needs. You need to learn about cat breeds. One, if you wanna be seen as an expert by your clients, then you have to actually be an expert. I do so many breeds of cats and I build that trust up with those clients specifically because I knew about them when they first called. Siberians, Siamese, Persians, exotic short hairs, Maine Coons, Ragdolls, Balinese, Devon Rex, Selkirk Rex, Sphinx, Abyssinian, Scottish Fold, these are just some of the breeds that I've gained as clients because they see me as an expert and they can trust that I know their cats and that I know what will be the best thing for their cats. This also includes their coat needs. 
I understand how each breed and each cat, even if it isn't a specific breed, are affected by coat texture, length, and color. So when I make recommendations to the client, it is based on experience and knowledge, and they see the difference, and I'll also be able to make adjustments during the groom if I need to. So being an expert is really, really important. I actually just gained a Persian client um, uh, within the past couple of weeks, and they had been going to a dog grooming salon, and it's not that they were necessarily unhappy with the dog grooming salon, but they called me up and, um, you know, I'm, I'm cat exclusive and I have a lot of cat information on my website, obviously. And they said, you know, I was reading your website and I was reading about you and, you know, just talking to you, you really sound like, you know, what you're talking about. Whereas every time I went to the dog grooming salon, they made such a big deal that I had a Persian. It made me feel like they didn't see them very often. And so I didn't feel that they were an expert. Whereas I was an expert because I knew what they were talking about. I knew what their cat's needs were. I knew that they had the tearing, you know, tearing in the eye areas. I knew that they had very dense, you know, full coats, you know, so these are, it's not rocket science to learn these things, but just those little bits of information really make a huge difference when you're talking to potential clients. And trust me, people will seek you out if they think you're an expert. I have so many purebred clients and I've only been open about six months and it's because people will drive to where I am because they want that kind of service. So we have how to, how to change your appointment schedules that you need to be, have a good understanding of breeds, personality, and coat needs. You also need to look at what services you are choosing. So not every cat is a candidate for every single grooming service. Temperament, breed information, coat needs, all of these things factor into choosing what is the best schedule and the best services that I can offer this client. If their client, if their cat isn't a good candidate for something, then I will offer alternatives or schedule options that will work better for this cat. For example, a mad aggressive cat may need to have a line cut for this first appointment, and I will charge big money for it too. But moving forward, I don't necessarily feel that they're a lion cut candidate because of, say, aggression. So I will instead have them do, for example, an eight-week bath and blow-dry schedule. As they grow out, I can monitor the hair growth. Then I can adapt my recommendations down the road. And I tell all these things to my clients because I want them to feel like they're involved with their cat's care. Once the cat is in full coat, the client and I may decide to switch to a six-week bath and de-shed schedule so that they notice zero shedding at home, their cat is much less stressed during and after the grooming appointments, and honestly, I have a better relationship with this cat. So in other instances, I might recommend a comb cut over a lion cut, which can be better for elderly cats or cats with a shorter turkey timer. So it really depends, and I take a lot of factors into consideration on what I recommend. And I never promise what I'm going to do with the cat until I meet them and work with them. So when a new client calls, I ask a lot of questions and I will provide a lot of information and I'll give them some of my thought process on, you know, what I look for. And I always tell them that I don't promise haircuts on the first appointment, um, especially if the cat has never been groomed before, but that when they come in, I'll be able to assess their coat needs and I'll be able to give them a much more accurate price quote once I meet the cat and I can feel them and see what's going on. And after I groom them, I will be able to provide better recommendations and even tools for home maintenance. How does that sound? That's what I tell my clients. And let me tell you, every single person is like, that sounds amazing. And I'm like, I know, because nobody else does it. Nobody else in my area does anything like that. And clients appreciate it. There's a reason why a client, especially if they've had their animal groomed before, is looking for someone else. So you have to do that next level of service and a lot of times it's just how you communicate with the clients, but also all of this kind of stuff makes grooming much easier on me because now I'm not having to do a lion cut on a crazy cat twice a year because the cat hates it. So I, it works kind of both ways. I'm solving the client problem and I'm making it better for me. And obviously it's always better for the cat. So the next thing is that you need to improve your tools and techniques that you're using. Just like serving, just like choosing services based on knowledge, the same thing goes for your tools and techniques. Which comb or brush you use? Which clipper and blade length? Will I groom this cat on the table or in my lap? Does it respond well to distractions or do I need to shorten the length of the groom? 
these things matter. And even though I use the same basic tools for everybody, I still need to cut down my time by not choosing the wrong thing first. My choices make a difference in time management, being efficient, and how the cat will react. The next thing you can do to improve your confidence and your grooming overall is gonna be improving your solo handling. This is a big one. If you are regularly using an assistant, then I hate to break it to you, but they are a crutch. What happens if they twist an ankle, break their wrist, call out sick, or if they just up and quit? Are you going to lose all that money because you have to reschedule? No, you're gonna to have to buck up and improve your solo handling skills. So let's talk about how you can do that. Improve your cat grooming skills. So the first thing you can do is rewind and really learn the basics. All that stuff that I talked about in the beginning, temperaments, breed information, also health conditions and symptoms. National Cat Groomers has made it super easy to become an expert at your own pace. The complete cat groomer training syllabus, duh. Now there are things that you can purchase as an introduction if you aren't ready to go full throttle into cat grooming. And I have one here. I recommend, so this is our ultimate cat groomer encyclopedia. It is amazing. We basically consider it the textbook of our syllabus program. So the syllabus includes two books, five DVDs, 13 online classes, plus a 10 week guided program. But if you wanna start with kind of more beginner stuff and kind of work your way up to the full program, then you must start with this book. This is gonna include what you need. And then I also highly recommend the Cat Grooming Basic online class. So as I'm talking about these things, I'm just gonna like pop them in to the chat so that I can just keep going, right? Because you just want me to keep going, hopefully. Hopefully you guys are sticking with me. Encyclopedia. Cat okay, Grooming Basics. So that way you guys can look at this stuff later when you are ready to bring your expertise level to the next level, right? Okay. Okay, so those are things I love, love, love. So it gives how to do things. There's pictures in it. It talks about, oh, so this is the Caddy Shack that I was mentioning before. It's amazing. Hope you guys can see. And then there's breed information. So it's gonna break down different breeds so you can learn about breeds. It talks about health. It talks about some business stuff. Guys, you must have this book. You will reference it all the time. So what you can also do is you can go to cat shows. Cat shows are amazing. They're so much fun. And you will learn so much about cats from people who are around these breeds and who have really dedicated their lives to bettering those breeds. And as long as they're not trying to actively prep a cat for a show ring, many of them are totally open to chatting and sharing information about their breed that they specialize in. I've talked to some great breeders about um, American Wirehairs, Selkirk Rex, Sphinx, Persians, obviously. I mean, there's so many and you get to see some really cool breeds that you might not see all the time. Um, you get to see them in person at a cat show. And, you know, as long as you ask, a lot of them will let you like pet them and touch them. And it's just, it's so much fun, but not just cat show, um, cat shows, but you want to talk to more cat experts. So I like to talk to cat behaviorists, um, cat specialty vests, you have like vet dermatologists. If you kind of look around to see what's within a short drive of you, you would be surprised at how many specific feline experts are actually out there. There's actually a chiropractor down the street from me that offers cat and dog chiropractic care. I think it's just like amazing. And so these are all sources of additional information and it's a great way for you to network for your business. So you definitely wanna go out. So one, you need to become the grooming expert. That needs to be the thing. So if you're gonna to go to these people and you should probably also ask them to like meet you for lunch or have a coffee date, just so you can kind of pick their brain a little bit, introduce yourself. If you are an expert, they will be much more likely to share their knowledge with you, which can really be invaluable. And if you ever have a client come to you with questions or if a situation comes up, you can also ask them about it. So it's really great for you to seek out other experts in the cat field so that you can take that knowledge and kind of incorporate it with you. So as I mentioned before, another thing you need to do is stop relying on an assistant by taking baby steps. So back to how we can improve your solo handling. 
you need to start by making baby steps. So I mentioned in yesterday's video that I will watch myself back on video that I've recorded of a groom to see where I can improve, what I could have noticed earlier, where I'm spending a lot of time, those kind of things. So there's a couple things that you can do to improve and step back from this assistant. So to improve your solo skills, start seeing where you can step back. Why are you using an assistant? What is the situation? Which cats are you using them for? And see where you can start using the assistant for less time and stop using them for certain services. Make sure that you also start compiling a list of tasks for your assistant to do because as you step back, they'll be free to do other things. Laundry, cleaning up cat hair, cat pee, checking your emails, posting on social media, organizing your client cards. Oh my gosh, think of how efficient you guys could be if there was only one person working on an animal at a time. The next thing to improve your time management is go back to those videos. Where are you spending the most time during the groom? Are you shaving the same areas over and over and over and over and over again? You need to get more efficient with your clipper swipes. Either you aren't using the right amount of pressure, the skin isn't being held taut enough, or you need to switch clippers or blades. So we recommend at National Cat Groomers, we recommend uh, wall clippers and blades. So I have my wall cam tens. I also have the, the new wall cordless. I love these clippers. Um, they are perfect for getting dirty, matted, pre-bath shaving zipped off in a GIF. And then I will use my cordless Bravura clippers to do my nice, clean, crisp clipper lines in as few swipes as possible. So with the right tools, the right position and handling, you should also be very thoughtful with your clipper swipes. So you're only going over it once, maybe twice to just nitpick any little wispy hairs. Because if you have to go over each area three, four, five times, well, you just did three, four, and five line cuts on the same cat, which I doubt the cat appreciates very much. And two, your client didn't pay for multiple haircuts. You only got paid for one haircut. So time-wise, you can increase your output and maintain your standards by improving your clipper skills. So real quick, um, Patty's asking about the video system I use. I use WISE cameras. They must be on Wi-Fi. So I know that your mobile, that might be a little tricky for you. You must use Wi-Fi because you can only access the app either on your phone or your tablet. Um, and unfortunately, if the power goes out, then my cameras go down. Um, which I probably shouldn't have said on such a public video, but that's okay. I love my wise cameras. They're super inexpensive. I love it. Um, Nicole also asked me about the KM cordless clippers. They are louder. I mean, you can hear them, but it's because you have the power versus your Bravuras are much quieter. Um, but the thing is you have to balance noise with power and being able to get through cat hair because not every brand I found gets through cat hair very easily. And my walls are amazing at it. So got to use walls. Love, 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 love them. So the next thing, oh, I want to talk about drying again real quick. Remember I said that I could go back to it. Um, so if you have, so the same thing is going to apply for your drying. If your cat's back is dry already, why are you still blowing it with the hose? I get that areas that are harder to reach as soon as the cat will let me. If they roll over onto their side, I'm getting the belly, the groin, the insides of the legs, the armpits, the underside of the tail. Then as I move the cat around, I can do sections of the back, the sides, the tail, the chest, the neck, because those are the easier sections to get. Once the cat is used to the dryer, you start working on the sections that are more challenging so that we don't waste time by drying the back over and over and over the dry the back only needs to be dried once right guys um about nicole about the loud so here's the thing is that it has to be done and to me the sound is negligible so i mean i understand not having like a basically a dryer when you're trying to clip them in the very beginning but sometimes what i'll also do is i'll take the clipper and i'll turn it on kind of behind my back or i'll kind of set it down or Here's where you can have an assistant, have them turn the clipper on while standing a few feet away. That way they can start to hear the sound and you can kind of slowly bring it over. But really the sound between clippers is, you're not having that big of a difference to be totally honest. Now I will say my KM cordless are not, not nearly the loudest clipper that I've owned. 
Um, I don't want to mention what that clipper is, but it's not a wall clipper. Um, but the thing is, is that if you're sitting there and your clipper is just chewing up hair, it doesn't matter how quiet it is because you're going to be sitting there for an hour trying to get this pelt off when I can get pelts off in 15 to 20 minutes tops with this sucker. And I mean like super, super pelted all over and I have to take my time. I try to keep my pre-bath shaving to be about 15 minutes or less. And so that's where I kind of need to kind of go. Okay. So the next thing that you can do is to get hands-on instruction from someone with the skills that you want. They can do challenging cats. They're a speed or higher volume groomer without sacrificing quality or that they work totally solo, even with more challenging cats. We, we know that as groomers, grooming is something that you have to learn with a mentor or with someone in person. When you have another person, an expert in what they do, they're there with you and you have basically doubled the amount of brain power working towards problem solving what is going on with the cat in front of you. This is where you need to check out my approved trainers and certifiers on the National Cat Groomers website because they are the bomb.com at what they do. They are used to working with all kinds of challenging cats. They get beautiful results and they run successful cat grooming businesses. And what's even better, they want to teach you. This is what they do. They work with students at all experience levels. If you haven't checked out the webinar I did recently with Sarah Warner, she's a certifier in Brisbane, Australia, you have to go watch it. She goes in depth about how to improve your skills and how to offer, or I guess she offers different levels of training to get you to where you wanna be in your cat grooming business. And she's not the only one. There's a whole group of trainers and certifiers that are out there ready to help you. So I'm gonna quote, real, or not quote, but I'm gonna type it in real quick where those you can find those guys because they're amazing. I mean, and what I mean that they, they're they ready and willing to teach you, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have had run-ins with you know, catty or you know grumpy groomers who are just kind of assuming that everybody is just out to get one another. That's not what the CFMG family is all about. That is not what we are about. So the approved trainers and certifiers are literally there to teach you. They want to teach you. They want to work with students. They want to help you get better. So if you know that you want to work on something specific, solo handling, elderly cats, improving your line cuts, you know, picking up your speed, trying to do more cats a day, then you can definitely work with one of our trainers and certifiers. And Shirley is asking, how can you become certified? I'm about to go over it. Although Shirley, I'm pretty sure you're asking about how to become a certifier. You can message me privately. So if you have sat through this whole thing and you're like, Lynn, I already know this stuff. I can do all those cats. My grooms look amazing. And I have no problems with time management. You know what I say to that? That's awesome. Now prove it. Go see one of our certifiers and take your exams towards certification. Take the exams and earn the title of Certified Feeling Master Groomer. And I will post a link where you can learn more. Oh, let's see, this is all the stuff I have to do by myself. Certification. Do I remember how to spell it? Process. Okay. There you go. That way you can check it out later. So when you join, okay, so I'm going to post, a, I posted the link where you can find more details. But what if you're not at that stage yet? And don't worry, that's fine. Lots of people are not at that stage yet. And if you're kind of hanging out with me during this seminar, I'm kind of assuming that you're not quite at the 10, the level 10 that you wanna be at, that you're not quite where you wanna be. When you join our syllabus program, you get access to a private group and you are joined by dozens and dozens, and I'm pretty sure we're at several hundred other students who are also working to improve their knowledge and skills, just like you. Danelle, myself, and all the trainers and certifiers are ready to help you in our student group as part of the Complete Cat Groomer Training Syllabus. We post videos, we answer your questions, we share experiences, and provide support even when you are struggling or feeling stuck. Now, this program isn't for, any, for just anyone. And that's okay. But if you've watched those videos with me, then I think you might be that person. You want to better yourself and you want it better for your cats. So let's do it. Click on the syllabus link to sign up and invest in your skills and in your business. And side note, we also offer a payment plan if you want to take baby steps 
Or like I mentioned, all the items in the syllabus can be purchased a la carte through the web store, nationalcatgroomers.com slash shop. And you can also sign up for membership with the National Cat Groomers Institute and get access to a library of business seminars, articles, and so much more just for members. You'll need to become a member anyway when you work through certification. So that's a great way to get your foot in the door with our programs. So let me just make sure that I've got that link. You've got membership. You've got syllabus stuff. And again, if you guys have any questions the rest of this evening, you can pop them here in the comments and I will try to get back to them in the next couple of days, especially if you were watching the replay. And I thank you so much again for joining me for tonight's video. I really enjoyed getting a chance to chat with all of you. If you need any recommendations, have any questions, or if you are ready to get started with certification, then you can email me at info at Thanks again, guys, and have a great night.